what's up called gang, all right? So we got this problem here, 5.15. So we've got this beam, right? And we know that the weight of this uh, area, basically, is 0.1 kilojoules per meter. And then we have this force acting, and we know that its uh, moment is five kilonewton meters. So what am I solving for? I don't know. Uh, the horizontal converted uh, components of the reaction today, right? So let's go ahead and do that. If we're looking for the vertical components, right, we're gonna take the sum of the forces in the y direction. But in order to do that, we're gonna to need to find how much force this area exerts, right? So we're given that it exerts 0.1 kilojoules per meter, so we just need to find how many meters it is. Right, so how are we gonna do that? Well, we can break it into two parts, right? Well, we have this part here, right? So this part here is six meters. So if we take that we have 0.1, uh, let's, let's say this force W, 0.1 kilonewtons per meter, and then multiply that by six meters, right? The meters are gonna cancel, and it's just gonna be 0.6 kilonewtons, right? So then let's go to this next part. So this next part is a triangle, right? It's a nice right triangle. So it's gonna be three meters, but we know that the area of a triangle is half of that. So instead of taking three, we're gonna take three divided by two, and then multiply that by 0.1. Uh, so this is again uh, meters kilonewton per meters. So then you're gonna get force W is equal to 0.75 kilonewtons, right? So now we know how much force this exerts. Uh, but later on, uh, so not for part A, but for part B, we're gonna need to know where it exerts. So we're gonna need to find the center of mass of this. Right, so center of mass, we're gonna take the force times each center of mass. So we're gonna need to find the center of mass of this part, which is gonna be a three, obviously, right? So we know this is gonna be a three, is where that center of mass is. And then this one, well, for every triangle, you know that the center of mass is at a third of the way away from the top. So this is gonna be one meter, and this is gonna be two meters. So we know that the center of mass is gonna be at six plus one, seven, seven meters. So then we can say that it's distance, right? Let's label this distance of W. This is gonna be where it acts. So if we're trying to find it, our formula is gonna be, we're gonna multiply the weight of this part, so we know that this is six, right? Or 0 0.6, right? We had said here 0 0.1 times six. So this is 0 0.6, it's the weight of this rectangular section, times the area of its, or times where its center mass is. So like we said, the center mass is gonna be three meters. And then we're gonna add that to the, the, uh, the weight of this one. So we said here, it's three halves times 0 0.1. So what's that 1.5 times 0 0.1? So this is gonna be 0 0.15. And then this is at seven is what we said, right? Six plus this one meter to get to this center mass. So this is basically the same exact, or it's almost a similar equation. And then you're gonna divide it by the entire mass of this, so 0 0.75 kilonewtons, or uh, force, excuse me. So then this is the equation you end up with. So then you're gonna get that its distance is equal to 3.8 meters, right, nice. I wrote this down wrong in my page, but I'm pretty sure I'm doing it right. Uh, maybe I should correct that. Uh, no, that's probably right. Okay, I'm gonna just trust myself. Okay, so there we go. Now we have a force and uh, where it acts. So we can go ahead and say that uh, there's a force that acting right about here, and this is force weight. Now we know that this distance is 3.8 meters. So let's go ahead and do part A, right? Part A wants to ask what's the vertical and horizontal components of A. So let's do it. So if we're taking the vertical or the horizontal components, right, let's start with some of the forces in the x direction. So in the x direction, we know it's gonna be equal to zero because it's at equilibrium, but let's see what's acting in the x direction. Well, so this force acts down, so this is only in the y direction. Uh, this force only acts down, so there's no forces acting in the y direction. So that means that A of x has to be equal to zero. Right, so a of x is equal to zero, right? There's no horizontal component at the end of a. It's only a vertical component. So then if we do forces in the y direction, let's do that. We know that some of the forces equal to zero at equilibrium. So let's start with force w, right? Or let's start with a, right? So a is pushing up. We can just assume that a is gonna be pushing up. This is a of y. So a is pushing up, nice. And then force w is pushing down. Nice. And then we know that the force is pushing down. So there we go, so this is the equation that we have. So if we move these two forces over, you get that um, 
a of y is equal to force of weight, which is 0 0.75, plus force, which is this f here, which is just 1. So then you get a of y is equal to 1.75 kilonewtons. Nice. So that's part A. So part B now wants us to find the moment around A. So this is where this distance comes in, because when we do moment, we want to know where the distance is. So for doing moments around A, uh, A. So I've done a lot of moment on my channel before. We're gonna know that it's gonna be, if we're doing it, it's gonna be force in the y direction multiplied by its distance in the x direction, and then we're gonna add that to force in the x direction times distance in the y direction. So like we said earlier, there's no forces in the x direction, but there's also no distance in the y direction on this problem. So we can go ahead and just find the forces acting in the y direction and multiply them by their distances in the x direction. So we're at A, so uh, if we go to force W, we know that it's W, it's 0 0.75 acting down, but we need to also consider what is the sign going to be. So force W around A is gonna make it wanna rotate like this. Rotating like this, this is clockwise. Clockwise means that we're putting a negative out front, so we're subtracting this from the moment. So it's gonna be negative uh, force W. And then its distance is what we found here, this is 0 0.38, 0 point, or no, not 0 0.38, 3.8. Nice, and then let's go to force. So force is also going the same way, it's going clockwise, so we're gonna be subtracting it. So it's gonna be minus one, because, or like we can just put force, but we know it's gonna be one, and then that distance is nine. Right? And then we have this five moments acting here, and this is also making it go clockwise, so we're gonna also subtract a five. Cool, so then here we just have to put in force W is um, 0 0.75, negative 0 0.75, uh, 3.8, that's just possible, I'm sorry. 3.8 minus force, which is 1 times 9, minus 5. Moment of A is equal to uh, negative 16.85 kilonewton meters per meter, not meters. Boom, there you go. That's how you solve this problem. So just about adding the forces up and uh, knowing how to find the area, basically. So that's how you do this kind of problem. Uh, thanks for watching, guys. See you in the next one. Check out my channel if you need more help. I got a lot of statics videos, a lot of physics videos, all sorts of stuff. So peace. See you next time.